is called bracket play as Hartford comes in as the four seed in District 2. The Indians come in as the one seed in District 1 with a nice win to secure up the district title last week against Southern Coffee County, 46 to 36 in a great win there, Mike. Yeah, it was a good win, Dan. Trying to get everything set up here. Got a little rain coming in the front window, so we're doing a little rearranging here. So we'll see if we can get everything working. But, yeah, it was a good win last week by the Indians and gave them a lot of momentum coming in here to district play. Big district game. Everyone counts now. You win or you go home. So uh, cold, rainy, well, cool and rainy conditions in the field. Going to be a little sloppy, so hanging on the ball is going to be one of the keys tonight, I think. Hangovers will be a or hangover, <laughs> turnovers will be a big deal here tonight. At St. Paul, last week's win, we'll recap that game a little bit. St. Paul trailed early 16 to nothing against a very big and physical Southern Coffee County team. We knew coming in they was going to be a handful, and they was, but the Indians stuck right in there, finally scored about halfway through the third quarter to make it 16 to eight. Southern Coffee County answered with a score of their own and led 24 to eight, and right before halftime, and really which was a swing of momentum, the Indians drove in and scored right before halftime to cut that score to 24 to 16. Third quarter was real tight. Indians come out playing hard and quite honestly kind of wore Southern Coffee County down in my opinion. They was big and physical and kind of warmed down and the Indians just kept right on playing and really took control of that game halfway through the third quarter into the fourth quarter. Ended up with a nice 46 to 36 victory. Yeah, big night by Adam Albertini last week. He had uh, 66 yards on the ground but he had uh, a lot more than that. He had, he had uh, I was looking through his passing stats, three of five for 33 yards and a touchdown passing. And Adam was just all over the place, had four rushing touchdowns last week and really uh, you know, was a spark plug for St. Paul. You are listening to the Richie's Pharmacy pregame show. Our half show, well, halftime show will be brought to you by Labette Health. And postgame show is KW Trucking. And our title sponsor is Farmers National Bank. Hope everybody joining us on the live stream. Michael, bring you up to date on, if you don't know how, how to join on the live stream as well as all the app updates you can get through 105.5. St. Paul's won the toss, Dan, and they're going to receive the ball here in these wet conditions. Coach Watrick wants the ball first. And the Indians are back deep <coughs> to return as Keaton Kennedy stands about his four-yard line. A little different look here. They move Adam Albertini up to the 15, so I don't know if this is something they've seen on film or if Coach Watrick just trying to uh, get Albertini up there, maybe seeing what Hartford may do on the kickoffs. It, I'm guessing it's something maybe they've seen on field where they squib kick a lot would be my assumption. Maybe not. We'll just see if this is a strategy play or a pooch coot kick or what. As the ball is teed up, 12 minutes on the clock, and we are underway on a cool, drizzly night here in St. Paul. Very wet field condition. It is a short kick. Going to pick it up out of Albertini about the 21. He cuts to his right and left. Up the center he goes. Got a little bit of room. Now he gets around the outside. He's got some running room across 40, 30, 20. There he goes down the sideline. One man to beat, and he's down inside the five-yard line. What a return. Boy, that's a good way for the Indians to get started. A big kick return there by Albertini. They tried to kick it on the ground. The ball was wet, so he did a good job of hanging on to it. But he also did a good job finding a hole in that uh, kick kickoff coverage by the Jaguars got all the way down inside the five-yard line. The field is clean, meaning no flag, so it'll be first and goal for the Indians. It appears to be right at the five-yard line on the opposite end of the football field. Mike tries to get situated as we had to change our setup a little bit. Too much drizzle and rain coming in on the electronic equipment. In the pistol is Albertini. Set to his right is Keaton Kennedy. In the slot to the right's Colin Carlson, a little end around to him, and he waltzes into the end zone. First play, touchdown, five-yard plunge by Carlson on the little inside reverse to Carlson, and the Indians get an early lead, and they lead six to nothing. Best way they could have hoped for to start, other than running that kickoff all the way back, get in there and, and just score early right on the first play, get run by Colin Carlson. The Indians has ran that play just a handful of times this year. Carlson lines up in that slot to the right quite a bit, when Albertini is in the pistol with Kennedy alongside of him, a lot of times they run a quarterback keeper right or left or the option in the same set. It's going to be exact same play. This time Kennedy, nope, he keeps it, and he's in on the exact same play, and he's actually came from the running back position on the right side, and the Indians lead 8 to nothing early on here in the first quarter. Yeah, 15 seconds off the clock. Indians out in the lead by 8. Indians at, come in as the number one seed in District 1 off the big win with Southern Coffee County. So they secured a district trophy last week as we will see Hartford as they're going to take possession of the football for the first time. They trail early on here 8 to nothing. 
I lost my bracket somewhere, Mike, and we'll bring you up to date on the bracket play as the night goes on as the Indians across from them. Uh, now, Coach Wartrick told Mike and I that if the Indians could win tonight, they would have another home game next week, and they would play the winner of Lost Springs, Center Lost Springs, who's 6-2, and two, and Marmonton Valley, or Marmonton Valley. Lost Springs plays Moran tonight at Lost Springs. So a little different look to the playoff picture this year, Mike. They draw, draw up in Week 9 a 32-team bracket. There's eight districts. Four teams from each district makes the playoffs. One, plays, one seeds play four seeds two three two seeds play three seeds and opposing districts so it gives everybody a different look in the last week line Kelly short kick and he's chopped down the returner about the 25 yard line nice return by number 14 soul for Hartford it'll be first and 10 for them from their own 25 yard line the Indians defense takes the field for the first time tonight see so yeah, how they're going to manage these wet conditions now Hartford got a lot more field they're going to have to cover and that I'm sure that wet ball is going to be hard to hang on to. Bradshaw boys at the ends. Give Carter at the nose guard position. It is the spread. Two left and two wide right in the pistol or in the shotgun. Can't read the number for the starter. And he's back to pass. He rolls to the right. Short pass and it falls incomplete. Close. Slips out of his hand. That wet conditions looks to have look to have an effect on Kistner's pass. It's going to be tough to pass for sure. It was intended for Dill, I believe. On So it'll be second and ten for Hartford. Might let everyone know, Dan, well, we got a second. Well, I'll wait. Here can they come out of the huddle. And same spread offense, two to the left, two to the right. Number 14, Soul, is in the shotgun all by himself. Here comes the snap. Look for these pistol snaps to be something. He rolls to his left, throws it out to the left, op- over the intended receiver a little pick and screen play, but it went over the intended receiver. Number 10's hands, that's McDiffitt, and uh, incomplete, so 0-2 oh for pass. That's third down and 10, so early pass and attack from Hartford, and that could be a challenge tonight in wet field conditions, Mike. Yeah, they're not afraid to try and throw the ball, see if they can get anywhere with it. Third down and 10 for Hartford from their own 25-yard line. A big third down for the Indians' defense. Two to the left, two to the right. They have not changed sets at all. Same exact set. Indians' D-backs have creeped back just a little. Now flag comes in. It's going to be a false start against Hartford. So now it's going to be third and 15 from about their own 17 or 18-yard line. Field conditions are good here at St. Paul. The Bermuda field, the Bermuda is dying out, so it looks kind of splotchy, but it's just because the Bermuda is going dormant. It's overseeded with rye, so the rye, as the rye comes up and turns the field back green again, it's good sod conditions, though. It's not tore up, Mike. Yeah, that's the nice thing about that sod. It stays thick even when it's dead, and maybe it'll keep some of it down, keep coming up those cleats. With the home game last week, there's a little bit of, you can see a little bit of traffic wear down the middle of the field, but still nice sod, especially in between the 30s is a little more wear. Now two receivers to the left, one to the right, one in the backfield next to the quarterback, and we are going to have a stoppage of play, a penalty flag, a delay a game against Hartford. So they are going backwards here quick early on, Mike. That'll be third down and 20 for Hartford as they back up five yards off the delay of game penalty. Same set for Hartford. They're right up to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. In the shotgun is Deal. Set to his right is running back. Here comes, nope, there's motion Motion again. again It'll be third and 25. It's going to be, how's our good buddy Larry say, third and (laughs) a cab cab ride for a first down as they back up inside their own 10. So far, negative 15 yards for Hartford. That's no way to start out, especially against a team like St. Paul, the way their defense has been playing. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Same set. Number 10, I believe, McDiffitt is in the backfield alongside the quarterback. Back to pass is Soul. He's going to throw down the middle of the field, deep, up in the air, and falls incomplete. As that pass was intended for McDiffitt, he had a chance at it. Albertini was behind him, just kind of playing safe defense, keeping him from getting a first down, and it went through McDiffitt's hands. And now it'll be fourth and 25 from inside their own 10. St. Paul going to get a chance here on this punt, get a short field. Hayden Smith comes into the game on the punt return for Gib Carter. Gib Carter moved back to his nose guard, nose guard position with the return of the Bradshaw brothers. 
Here comes the snap for the punt. High snap, good snap, gets it. It's going to be end over short punt. Everybody just needs to get out of the way. Takes a good bounce. Albertini fields it on the bounce. He beats one man. He's got room down the left sideline to the right and back down to the left. Now he's corralled, but he's not until he's inside his own 20 down to his 16-yard line of Hartford. The right play is to get out of the way, Dan, but not if you're Adam Albertini. He's not afraid of anything, and he's got the hands and the quick feet to back it up. So good job that by Albertini. Punt looked like it was a backwards end over end, like it was going to bounce backwards and it, when it hit the ground, and it didn't. It bounced towards Albertini right into his bread basket, so he picked it up and with a nice return by him. Good decision by him to go ahead and pick that up. Into the split back formation, Carlson to the left. Kennedy to the right, Albertini up under center. First and 10 for the Indians. It's going to be Albertini around the right side. He's got some daylight to the outside. Flag. Now there's a flag comes in and he, as he gets into the end zone, but that's going to probably be a holding against the Indians would be my guess. And it is a hold. That penalty flag through inside the 15 appears to be about the 13 yard line. So that will bring up first and long for the Indians negating the Albertini touchdown. Albertini appears to be a lot for Hartford to handle early on this game, Mike. Yeah, I think he's going to be the fastest kid on the field from what we've seen so far, which Look, is not unusual. It looks to be about a eight-yard penalty. In essence, it's more than that because it negates a touchdown by Albertini. So it's going to be first and 18, the ball back at the 21-yard line. Split back formation. No, excuse me. In the pistol is Albertini. Slot to the left is Carlson. Here's the snap. Albertini's going to keep it around the left side. Cuts back to the middle. Got a good daylight, and there he goes, Mike. One play, touchdown. 21-yard touchdown run by Adam Albertini. Good blocking by the Indians' offensive line, and Carlson from that slot back position. There was a hole big enough to drive a bus through. <laughs> it sure was. And the Indians lead 14 to nothing early on here in this ballgame. Pending the extra point, 14 to nothing, Indians up with 11.02. Not even a minute off the clock yet. Left in the first quarter, split back formation. Carlson to the left, Kennedy to the right, Albertini up under center. Here's the snap. He's going to roll to his right. He's looking, 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 trying to evade two or three people. He does so far. Lost it into Carlson. Oh, oh my gosh. And it hit Colin right in the hands and looked like he was just going to stand there with it. And somehow it fell right out of his hands to the turf. And it's incomplete as he is awful upset with himself as <laughs> he had that in his hands. He was just for, too open. It looked like he was in his hands for like a second and a half before it fell out, but it fell right to the turf and incomplete. 14 to nothing. 11, Indians lead. 11 minutes left to go here in the first quarter. We'll be back after this 30 second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. See if that helps that echo, yeah. Mark. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul where Ivan Murillo tees the ball up and that's always a good sign for the Indians because that means they're coming off of an Indian score and they lead 14 to nothing with 11 minutes left to go in the first, folks. Yes, one minute gone off, 58 seconds exactly, gone off the clock as Hartford come in and spread and threw three incomplete passes and had a lot of penalties to back them up. On the return is number one up across the 20, almost to the 30 on the short kick by Dill. It's going to be a a little tougher night for Ivan to get his foot square on that football here tonight, Mike. Yeah, it's going to be a lot tougher for him, but the good news is the field's going to play slow, so have time to get down there and get some coverage. Well, we've got a second. I was going to go ahead, Dan, real quick, invite everyone to join us on the live stream. Go to hot1055.net, click on the St. Paul Indian banner, take it to the YouTube channel, and click on the St. Paul versus Hartford game. You can watch it live. Two receivers to the right, two to the left, and the shotgun is Soul. Back to pass, across the middle, and it's going to be falls incomplete. Looked, appears like number one had it. Dill, Colin Carlson hits him quickly, and it falls to the turf, and it's second and ten as the Jaguars have really come out with the pass attack here tonight. They're wanting to throw the ball, but it's going to be tough, obviously. He's 0 for 4 so far. Second and ten for Hartford. 
lines are difficult to see on that end of the field. I wish they'd get down here on our end and play only in the second quarter, Mike. That's right. <laughs> and the shotgun is Hartford, two to the right, two to the left. Here comes the snap on the second and 10. Back to pass. He rolls to his right, tries to scramble away. He's got some running room. He's got a lead blocker in front of him. He's going to be first down as he runs out of bound. Well, he's going to be close to a first down as he gets across to the 36. That's number 15, Kistner, excuse me, as the quarterback. As they get short down, of see the numbers. He's short. It's going to be third down and two for Hartford as he ran out of bounds at the 35-yard line their own 35-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the shotgun. His number's all wrinkled up on the front of his jersey, Mike. It's hard to read. Motion from right to left. A little end around. Oh, in there quick was Gibb Carter, and he gets him slowed down enough where Bradshaw gets in there and finishes him off for a big loss on the play. Good job by Gibb Carter from that nose guard position. And that's a loss on the play. Loss of about four on that play. Gibb Carter just shot through there, and it was all about him knowing exactly where that ball was. He made a good tackle. Fourth down and seven as they're backed up <coughs> to about their 30-yard line. And it appears like they're going to go for it here. Two receivers to the right, one to the left as the Indians get set. Running back set to his right. Boy, that was almost motion. Quarter oh, it's going to be kick. a little quick kick. End over end backwards kick. Everybody gets out of the way, and it's going to bounce about the 28-yard line of the Indians, and it'll be first and 10 for the Indians. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 28-yard line on their third possession of the game, and so far it hasn't taken the Indians very long to score. We'll see if the Indians can get a good drive here from their own 28-yard line. A lot of football tonight here, a little odd night on a Thursday night, but week nine, a lot of the old playoff system used to be Thursday night and Tuesday night. Now it's Thursday night and Friday night. I'm not real sure why it's Thursday night, but it is. So we'll go with it, Mike. That's what the NFL does. We might as well, too. <laughs> and the pistol is Albert He's going to keep it to his left. Up the middle, he's got a lot of running room. Cuts back to the middle. There he goes. One man to beat. One man to beat, and he does it. And as he slows down and idles into the end zone, it has been all blocking and all Albertini so far as he racks up the yards early on. And the Indians doing a great job giving him running room. And he gets into that secondary, and it's game over as he puts the moves on the secondary. It's just your free safety. You're standing out there like a tree, Mike. You don't know which way to go. He, <laughs> I think that's what, you know, so far it looks like that's what we're going to see. If he can get through that first line of defense by Hartford, they just don't have anyone that can keep up with him in the back. And the Indians dot line doing a great job and open up massive hole for him to go through at the line of scrimmage. Eye formation this time. Albertini up under center. Carlson at fullback, Kennedy at tailback, and here's the snap. Hand off to Keaton Kennedy's. He hit at the line of scrimmage and ripped down. Dill brings him down for Hartford. Extra point is no good, and the Indians lead 20 to nothing with 9.52 left to go here in the first quarter. Indians going to really need those extra points if they're going to get anywhere close to doing anything. You know, you don't want to call things too early. Count your chickens for their hatch, but, it, you know, the point rule is in effect, and every time you miss one of those extra points, those start to add up. The drizzle has let up just a little bit, but a foggy, hazy, just misty night here in St. Paul. It's supposed to clear off a little later tonight, but that won't do much good for now. It was about half raining here an hour before game time. It hasn't rained a whole lot. Besides just the wet grass, it hasn't really affected the field conditions at all. St. Paul dressed out in their home maroon uniforms with gold letters, and Hartford, the visiting, visiting team, in their orange bottoms, white tops with orange letters, and oranges, you know, kind of reddish orange helmets as Murillo jogs back out with the tee and he tees the ball up at the 30 yard line. Having a little trouble getting his foot into it tonight. Ivan's done a real good job for the kicking duties for the Indians with a lot of touchbacks this year. If the Indians can continue to move on into the playoffs. That will be big for the Indians. Murillo has the ball teed up back deep is a returner for Hartford. Quick kick down the middle, right in between the up back's legs. It's taken on the fly by number 14, Soul, and he's ripped down. Good tackle by Keaton Kennedy back at about the 26 yard line, 27 yard line. First and 10 for Hartford from their own 27. St. Paul defense now gets come out, keep the heat on, get the ball back. 
Good things are happening so far on both sides of the ball for the Indians. First and 10 for Hartford from their own 27. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the shotgun. Waiting for the snap. First and 10 from their own 27. It's knocked down. Good hands in the air. East and Dent got his mitt on that football and knocks it down incomplete on the blitz right in Kistner's face that time and knocks that football down second and 10. Hartford must think they've got something with that pass if they can get it to work. They must have seen something as they studied the Indians on film, thought they'd get away with some, but so far it hasn't worked very well for them. Well, this kind of conditions, Mike, does not bode well for no, the pass No, it changes attack. everything when it's like this. It is greasy, slick out there, hard for the quarterback to get a hold of it. Same set, two to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the shotgun for Hartford. Again, 10 in there quick, but this time it's complete and it's taken down quickly as number 14, Soul ripped down, it looked like Carlson or Carlson and Haney in on that. Carlson rips him down by the jersey, short gain on the play. It's gonna be third down and nine, a gain of a yard, very little gain. So good defense by Carlson on the quick pass. Is that the first completed pass? That's the first right? completed pass, yep. One of six. Two One to the yard. right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun, third and 10 for Hartford. He rolls to his left, pumps twice, and up over the head and out of bounds. Far, falls harmlessly incomplete, out of bounds. Pass intended for McDiffitt. And it'll be fourth down and nine from their own 27. Let's see if they go for that quick kick again here. Really. When they fake that or get everybody up on the line of scrimmage, they're trying to eliminate the Albertini threat on that kick return. Barely three minutes gone in this <laughs> game, Mike. It's 20 to nothing Indians lead, and this is the third possession for Hartford on offense and just three minutes into the game. They've stopped the clock a lot as same set. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. In the pistol is Kistner. Assume it's going to be that quick kick, and it is. He punts it, and it streams out of bounds about to 21-yard line. So pretty decent punt by Hartford. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians right at the 21. As 8.54 on the clock, Indians with their, will start for their fourth possession of the game, three minutes into the game. Yeah, so far Hartford's been three punts, and St. Paul's had three touchdowns on their possessions. And Indians have only run three plays <laughs> yeah, on offense, I was Mike, look correct? And see. Flip my sheet back over here. Yeah, they've run three plays and scored three times. So here we go, first and 10 for the Indians from their own 21-yard line into the I formation. Carlson at fullback, Kennedy at tailback, Albertini up center, and look how many people's up on the line of scrimmage for Hart. And here's a handoff, this time to Carlson as he pulls forward for a good four or five-yard gain. Let's call it four. It'll be second down and six for the Indians on a good four-yard gain on first down. All eight Hartford players well within the hash, so the option could be a nice play for the Indians here tonight. Second down and six for Hartford. 8.29 left to go in the first quarter. Indians already lead 20 to nothing. Up to the line of scrimmage. Comes the Indians, same formation in the eye. This time it's handoff to Kennedy. He's got some room right up the middle, just one man to beat, and he finally rips him down and slams him to the ground. Good hard run by Keaton Kennedy, brought down by McDiffitt. And Kennedy, luckily, McDiffitt got him by the jersey, ripped him down hard, but Kennedy seems to be fine on the play. Nice first down run, clear up to the 38-yard line. Got about 13 yards on that run. Good run by Keaton. He was straight up and down. The tackler had him by, from behind, just drug him to the ground. Murillo comes in at a guard and Easton Dent and Colin Carlson in front of Albertini. Albertini's going to keep it right up the middle. He goes and he's going to be chopped down after a good five-yard gain on first down. That'll be second and five as Albertini gets the ball into Hartford territory down to the 37-yard line. Let's call it second down and six, a gain of four for Albertini as this is the slowest as the Indians has went on offense all night long so far and we're a total of about five <laughs> minutes into the game. Same set, Dent to the right, Carlson to the left, Albertini in the shotgun. Here's the snap, Albertini's gonna hand it off to Dent. It's got running room left side, there he goes, got some running room, 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown. No flags, looks Easton like good. Dent 
as he turned, put his foot on the gas and blew through that line of scrimmage and away he went, Mike, touchdown Indians. 37 yards for Easton Dent and a touchdown. 7.15 left to go here in the first quarter. Indians lead 26 to nothing. It's been all Indians so far, offense and defense here as Albertini lines up in the shotgun. Dent to his right, Carlson to his left. Here's a snap. Albertini's going to keep it this time. Follows Dent. Great lead block by Dent on McDiffitt. And Albertini just put his hand in the middle of Dent's back and said, lead me to the promised land, my boy. <laughs> he did it. And he did. And Albertini in for the extra point, 28 to nothing. 7.15 left to go here. And the first will be back after this 30-second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Welcome, buddy. Join us on the live stream. Indians lead 28 to nothing. 7.15 left to go here in the first quarter. Welcome back here to Miles Field. I want to thank everybody for streaming on the internet and listening on 105.5 radio to Indian football. The Indians lead 28 to nothing. 7.15 left to go here in the first quarter in week nine of bracket play for state football. 32 teams left in bracket play in eight man division two and the Indians come in as the one seed in District 1. They are playing the four seed in District 2 versus Hartford, and they are well in control of this game early on here in the first 28 to nothing. Murillo with the ball teed up again at the 30. Number 14 back deep, Soul for Hartford. And Murillo's kick is off. Soul bounces off of his ankle. He picks it up at the 10. Starts down the middle, up around the right side. Hayden Smith had the initial hit, missed him, but cleaned up quickly. Looks like Dent gets up as well as O'Hara, or no, Wilson Smith gets up off the pile. So good job by them. Austin O'Hara down there quickly for the Indians, but he missed as well as Hayden Smith. But it was stopped quickly. Soul was stopped quickly by the rest of the kickoff coverage. First and 10 for Hartford. Ball is right at the 20-yard line. Two to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the shotgun. First and 10 for Hartford from their own 20. Waiting for the snap. And motion from left to right. Now there's a flag on the play. I think it'll be a false start. No, yes, it is false start against Hartford, so they are having all kinds of trouble here on offense so far tonight, Mike. Yeah, I think that was a case where they were trying to get a man up on the line, so they had enough on the line. About the time he moved, the receiver went in motion, so they had two people moving. So this is a, a not a totally different look because Chautauqua spread a little bit, but Hartford has ran this spread more than anybody we've seen. So yeah. it puts Carlson and Haney on one side of the field in coverage, and it puts Albertini and Kennedy on the opposite side. That leaves the Bradshaw boys, Jason Chandler in at the D ends, Gib Carter at nose guard, and Easton Dents in there at the lone linebacker position. Same set, two to the left, two to the right, back to pass. It's going to be a quick pass off to the left. It's caught, and it's going to be brought down, but not until he gains about three or four yards as Kennedy was tied up out there. Can't tell who. I think it was Soul on, nope, McDiffitt. McDiffitt on the catch Mike it'll be a gain for him for three yards to bring up second down and seven ball up to the 23 yard line well there's one good thing about it Mike if this game continues on like it was the second quarter will be right in front of us That's on this, right. side of this other end of, good. this opposite end of the foot this east end of the football field hasn't got any usage at all yet as two receivers to the left two to the right for Hartford Back to pass, across the middle on the slant, and that's way off target. It was intended for McDiffitt, and it'll be third down and seven for the Jaguars. Timeout, Jaguars. So with that, we'll take a one-minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105.
Keith's being ornery on the internet, trying to get us some TV time. <laughs> I haven't put my makeup on, Mike. I know. I'll take my hat off and he won't be able to see us for the glare. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching the live stream. Hope you're enjoying the game. Indians lead early on here, 28 to nothing. I want to thank all our sponsors for being able to bring us a live stream. It's been real nice for everybody that can't make it to the games, especially at night like tonight. Mike. Yeah. Welcome back to Miles Field. Indians lead, whoops, Indians lead 28 to nothing. Two to the left, two to the right for Hartford. Oh, now the Indians look at the bunch up in press coverage. Back to pass. He's going to run. He's got a little runner room off the left. Now to the right. He's going to be close to the first down. He's going to have a first down by two or three yards. On the scramble is Kistner. So it'll be the second, or no, first first game of the, first down of the game for Hartford on the scramble from Kistner, the quarterback. First and 10 for Hartford from their own 35, just across the 35-yard line. Excuse me, 31-yard line. Hard to read the Striping Hard on that end the of the field. On jerseys right? and stripes and everything in that mud. First down and 10 for Hartford from their own 31 yard line. It's two receivers to the left, two to the right, one in motion from right to the left. Now gets set behind Kistner, the quarterback. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle. He's got a little bit of running room, bottled up quickly by the Indians, not until he gains three or four yards. It's going to be second down and call it seven for Hartford as the ball crosses up to. The 34-yard line. We're going to call it second down and seven for the Jaguars from the 34-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the shotgun. On the second down play for Hartford. Motion from left to right is Mc... McDiffitt now motion from right to left as they reset. They're going to run. Quarterback's going to keep it around the left side. Chopped down for a short gain on the play. Brought down there by Dent. And Kistner's going to gain another two yards. We're going to call it third down and six. They're coming out in that spread with two receivers out each way. They shift one back to a running back position, and then they get set again, then put another receiver in motion, trying to throw a little confusion in there for the defense, hoping to mix them up a little bit. We'll see what they dial up here on third down and six. A big play for Hartford and for the Indians defense. Two to the left, two to the right. Ball spotted inside their own 35 at the 34. Kistner in the shotgun, waiting for everybody to be set. Here comes the snap. It's going to be a pump and go across the middle. It's complete and hit hard, but not until he has about seven yards. That's Colin Carlson with a good hit. Soul for the Hartford first down as Hartford find a little success on offense here, Mike. Yeah, those little quick hitters across the middle, they've figured out they can't get them down the field, have much luck of holding on to the ball, but those quick hitters, if they get in between those linebackers and the coverage, they can get a little bit of yardage. Two to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun, first and 10. Ball now in Indian territory for the first time tonight. Ball spotted at the Indian 37. Back into the backfield goes Soul. Kistner waiting for the snap. Now motion from left to right to McDivitt. It's a handoff to Soul off the left-hand side, trying to get to the outside. He's going to be chopped down. No gain on the play. Good. Quick pressure up in there. It's like Carlson and maybe Keaton Kennedy, I think, getting in, getting up off the pile. It is Keaton Kennedy. Get a little misdirection in there. They'll put that running back back in, in the backfield, get him set. The receiver goes in motion. That time they could have handed off the receiver or to the running back. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Now Kennedy has to take a knee as he's had trouble all year long with his left shoulder. With um, I'm going to call it stinger, and we hope that's it, what it is. But he uh, he does a good job of fighting that pain off and getting back into the game. But he uh, in on the tackle that time and looks to me like that same left arm yeah, injury here. 3:35 left to go in the first quarter. 28 to nothing. Indians lead. We're going to go ahead and take a short timeout, take a 30 second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105.
Well, welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul's. Kennedy makes his way off the field. Hayden Smith into the game for Kennedy on the second down and 10 for Hartford. Right back to play we go at the Indian 37. In motion is Soul. He sets behind Kistner. And now motion by McDivitt. And it's going to be rolled to the right. That cross the middle throwing deep. It's got a man and complete to number one down there. First down down at the Indian 12-yard line. That's Dill on the catch. Looked like the Indians, Hayden Smith had a chance to swat it down. It just got over his outstretched arm and Dill catches that pass. So Hartford all of a sudden down at the Indian 12-yard line. Yeah, nice little gain there on that pass play. Finally worked for the Jaguars. Two to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the shotgun. First and 10 from the Indian 12-yard line. Now motion set back in behind Kistner is Soul. Here comes the snap. It's going to be rolling to his right, looking for one man out there at the corner, and it's going to fall incomplete as Kenny Haney on the coverage on Dill. And it'll be second down and 10 from the 12 of the Indians. Nice crowd here in the drizzly conditions for St. Paul. Not a huge crowd, but a nice crowd considering all the bad conditions here on a nasty night. Pretty good football weather, though, Mike. Yeah, it's just right for football weather. You bring an umbrella and a little bit of rain boots with you and get out here and enjoy the game. Hartford with a small contingent with a pretty good road trip. Mike, what is that? How far is it down here from Hartford? Uh, I think it's up there somewhere around Emporia in that area. Motion again by Soul set in the backfield behind Kistner. Now motion by McDivitt. It's going to be a handoff to Soul right up the middle. Look for some room off that left side. And it's going to be Bradshaw in on the tackle. And Carter helps bring it down as well as Chase Bradshaw from that defensive end. I think I'm just going to have to start saying Chase and Chandler Bradshaw because <laughs> yeah. I'm usually pretty good at memorizing the Indian numbers, but them two I just get mixed up. They look alike even when they got different numbers <laughs> on their shirt, don't they? Anyway, two receivers to the right, two to the left. With the return of Chandler Bradshaw, it's been nice. Gib Carter's got to move to the nose guard position and Chandler back at his defensive end position. End around this time to McDivitt's got a little running room. Carlson chases him down and he's chopped down at the nine yard line. They look to have a little running room, but Carlson turned the gas on and cut that down quick. And McDivitt knocked down after a short gain. It's going to be third down and call it seven for Hartford at their own, or excuse me, fourth down and seven for Hartford from the eight and a half yard line. That's where Hartford's giving the ball off to that receiver as he comes across in motion. Two to the left, two to the right. In the shotgun is Kistner. Waiting for the snap is Kistner. Fourth and seven. Back to pass. Pump fake. Now he's rolling to his right. He's going to throw it to the corner. Knocked down. Oh, Haney had a chance to pick that off, and he just swatted it to the ground. That's all right. Indians hold on downs. It'll be first and ten from the Indians from their own eight and a half yard line. Indians got a lot more field to work with now. A pretty good drive put together by Hartford. Just stalled out on them down there inside the ten yard line. Well, I got my wish, Mike. They're right here in front of us. Yeah, there they are. The problem is, if this quarter runs out, they'll be down. <laughs> Go switch around on the other again. end. But either way, Indians first and ten from their own eight and a half yard line. They lead twenty-eight to nothing. One thirty-six left to go here in the first quarter. Hartford finding more success with that spread passing game. Up to the line of scrimmage. Haney up under center. Carlson at fullback. Albertini at tailback. Here's the snap. He hands it off to Albertini. Cuts to his left, to his right. There he goes. One man to beat. And he turns the gas on. Can he outrun him? It's a sprint. 30, a 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Adam Albertini. And that was Dill, I believe, trying to chase him down. Looked like he had a chance to dive at his ankles, but... Albertini turned the gas on and outruns him to the end zone. Yeah, just a foot race, and Dill was in pursuit, hot pursuit, breathing down his neck, and just ran out of gas, couldn't catch him. 72-yard run by Albertini for the Indian touchdown. Good block, blocking by the initial line of scrimmage for the Indians. It gets him into the secondary, and he just makes a couple cuts to get around them last couple guys. Now Albertini splits wide to the right. Carlson alone set back behind Haney's up under center. Hand off to Carlson, and he just scorched right into the end zone. Uh, the Extra point is good, and the Indians lead 36 to nothing. 122 left to go in the first. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105.
Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul where the Indians lead 36 to nothing on a 72-yard Albert, Adam Albertini touchdown run. He's got to be up over 100 yards, well over 100 yards already here tonight, Mike. Yeah, he is. It's here and still in the first quarter, and he's got stats like a lot of guys have at the end of the game. He's got three touchdowns and 151 yards on the ground so far, and we're not out of the first quarter yet. you got to give a lot of credit to the line of scrimmage yeah, for the Indians. Yeah, line gets a lot of credit but for that. Adam Albertini has got to be up over 1,500 yards rushing on the season. He was 1,200 a couple, uh, let me see, before Southern Coffee County game and racked up another nice game against Southern Coffee County. So he's got to be up, bumping on 15, 1,600 yards on the ground. That's quite a feat for Adam Albertini and the Indians' line of scrimmage. Here's a kick by Murillo. It's taken by Soul. He's got some running room up the middle. He's going to be chopped down about the 30-yard line. Good, hard run on the return by Soul. It'll be first and 10 for Hartford from their own 30. 117 left to go into first, 36 to nothing. The Indians lead over Hartford. We're still in the first quarter, Mike. <laughs> we had another two. game like this earlier this year where we was here a long time. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun, first and ten. Motion by Soul sets behind Kistner now. At the tailback position, now motion by Diffitt. Soul's going to, or excuse me, Kistner's going to keep it out of Hartini. Squirts in there. Rips him down from behind, from the opposite side. He's going to lose two yards. It'll be second down and 12 as Albertini came across from the opposite side and chased him down from behind, and it's a loss of two for Hartford. You're going to have to be careful not to try and jump on that run when they put that receiver in motion, come back, they've got that triple option in the backfield. they still got deal that he's capable of going out for the pass. So we're going to have to be pretty careful not to sell out on the run. Wilson Smith in the game as well. Wilson Smith comes in nose guard. Hayden Smith comes in for Kennedy at the cornerback position. Two to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the pistol. Back to pass. Looking to his left. Pump would go across the middle. High. Picked off by Kenny Haney. And there he goes. It's a pick, pick six. six, folks. As long as there's not a, and there's an illegal block yeah. by Dent. Yeah, they're going to be oh, in play. At the 10 yard line, it's going to negate. Man negate the pick six the interception is going to be good as it looked like dent was tangled up with the defender down there and they both ended up on the ground dent's upset he didn't think he held held him but the official did and he's the one that's going to matter it's going to be a penalty flag about the 12 yard line so it'll be back up of 10 yards it'll be first and 10 for the indians about the 22 yard line i think once they mark it off that was intended on a slant. Albertini was on the coverage. It went over the intended receiver's head, and our, or Kenny Haney was just the product of it. Here it is, and it lit right in his breadbasket, Mike, and away he went. Boy, Haney, what a good play. Yeah, it's a good play by Kenny Haney. Streaking down that sideline to the right side. He's probably going to have words with old Easton after <laughs> yeah, the game about it, taking that. Easton was upset with <laughs> as, well, as much as anybody. Here's a Indian first and 10, Haney up under center. He pitches it to Albertini around the left side. Tries to get to the corner. He cuts back, spins to the middle, ripped down, but not until he's inside the five-yard line. The Indians ended up with the ball. It looks to be about the 15, maybe the 14-yard line where they started from. Now the chain gang just now getting set down there. And now I'm not real sure if it's first, first and goal or if it's second and short. Box, I think. It is first and goal for the Indians inside their own five. Looks to be about the three-yard line. Haney up under center. Carlson at fullback, Albertini at tailback. Here's the snap. Hand off to Albertini, left side, and there's his fourth touchdown. He scorched right through the middle, off a left guard, right through a hole, untouched, and the Indians expand their lead to 42 to nothing with 10 seconds left to go here in the first. Hayden Smith comes into the game for Adam Albertini as Haney comes in from the sideline with the play. Haney up under center, Carlson at fullback, Smith at tailback on the extra point here. And it's going to be handed off to Hayden Smith. Got a hole, puts his shoulder pads down, leans for the end zone. He's in there. It's good. Good job following Carlson with Hayden Smith. Dropped his level of his shoulder pads to get that football across the goal line. So the Indians lead 44 to nothing with 10 seconds left to go in the first quarter, folks. <laughs> we'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Let's St. Paul football on Hot 105.
Uh, welcome back to Miles Field here, here at St. Paul, Mike. 44 nothing. Indians lead. Ten seconds left to go in the first. Yeah, pretty good first quarter. You can't complain about really anything. Indians done nothing but score points this whole first quarter. As Murillo tees the ball up for multiple time here tonight at his own His leg's going to be wore out by halftime. All I can say is the Indians has put together a pretty good game so far offensively and defensively. Hartford comes in as a four seed in District 2 in that same tough district as Hanover. Murillo, ball teed up, short kick down the middle. It's going to be taken by the up back this time. McDiffitt around the left hand. No, Dill on the return, I believe, around the left hand He's side. He's going to break free. They missed a Breaks couple free tackles back to the there. middle and then finally brought down. Guess who comes off the bottom of the pile? East and Dent. Oh, he's around that football. Ball returned up to their own 35-yard line. First and 10 for the Jaguars from their own 35. Let's get the defense set here as Chase and Chandler Bradshaw are the defensive ends. Gib Carter nose guard, Easton Dent middle linebacker. Cornerbacks to the left sides, Haney and Carlson to the right side is Smith and Albertini. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Now Soul goes back in the backfield behind Kistner. First and 10 for Hartford. Now motion by McDiffitt. Handoff and he tripped. Soul trips to the ground. I think he tripped over Kistner's foot as he tried to get off to a run and start. And that's the end of the first quarter, folks. The end of the first quarter is 40 Indians, 44, Hartford, 0. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. We need to make sure we talk about yep. it. Welcome back to Miles Field, second and 13 for Hartford from their own 33-yard line. Motion, now McDiffin in motion, back to pass. Is Kistner, ball falls out of his hands, loose, and he jumps on it as Adam Albertini was approaching quickly, and there was that wet football, Mike, as he rolled to his right, and it just flat fell just out of his out. hand. Yeah, that's... And Albertini was converging on him, and he had no choice but to jump on it. Big loss, third down and 21. 21 from the 25 yard line. Hey, Mike, we want to congratulate Tyler Watrick, who's headed to Wamego to cross country to state this weekend. Yeah, had a big year this year for Taylor going back to state. I think, did she go last year too? Two to the right, two to the left. I believe so, Mike. Back in the pistol is Kistner. And here, whoa, hold on now. now Soul got a head start on the other side. He was five yards past the line of scrimmage and the ball's still on the ground. And it's going to be a false start on the drag wires. Also, Mike, uh, we got here providing the Indians win what appears like they're well on their way to that. St. Paul will host this uh, regional eight-man Division II game next Friday night. Time to be announced. That'll be due to whoever wins in travel time probably, Mike. Yeah. We assume it'll be a 7 o'clock game, but stay tuned to 105.5 later. Bring you up to date on all the times of next week's games. Two receivers on a big third down and 26. Kistner rolls to his right under pressure, gets it across the middle, and he's going to be knocked down. It's going to be about a five-yard gain. Pass complete to number 14, Soul. And it'll be fourth down and 16 for the Jaguars from their own 24-yard line. With Hartford struggling in that first quarter with the wet conditions and this spread, a lot of incomplete passes, Mike. That is why the score is what it is. The clock has stopped a lot in that first quarter. Each team had three possessions of the football, and we was three minutes into the game. 
Now, Kistner trying to line people out, and he's going to roll to his right, finally gets it off. Boy, he is blocked by Wilson Smith. Nobody back deep for the Indians, and it's going to roll down. It'll be a nice punt to the back the Indians at their own 20-yard line. Looks to be about the 19. First and 10 from the Indians from their own 19-yard line. Let's see who goes into the game for the Indians here as they take the field on offense. Appears to be Kenny Haney is going to stay in at quarterback. Set the line of scrimmage for you. It'll be Chase Bradshaw has been the center all year long. Gib Carter and Easton Dent are your guards. Chandler Bradshaw and Kenny, well, not Kenny Haney though. Excuse me. I'm going to change up here because with <coughs> Haney in at quarterback, Bradshaw at a tight end and left tight end appears to be Gib Carter. Ivan Marillo is a left guard. Haney up under center, hand off to Albertini. Here he goes around the left side, Mike. I think he's going to, well. He's going to put the juke move on <laughs> one man, 20, 15, 10, 5 touchdown. And I seen a little push in the back by Easton yeah, Dent, but he yeah. got away with it. Did you see that, Mike? Yeah, I did too. About the 35-yard line of the Indians, Adam Albertini with one play and one scores. He pads his stats here tonight, and the Indians lead 50 to nothing. 9.56 left to go here in before halftime. I look for that to be about it for Albertini. Yeah, tonight, they better Mike. sit him down, get him some rest, and make sure Hayden, he doesn't get hurt. Hayden Smith into the game at a halfback behind Carlson. Haney up under center. Here comes the snap. Going to be hand off to Smith. Tries to make some room up the middle, puts the shoulder pad down, so he's going to be short. And he is short of the end zone. Extra point is no good. Indians lead 50 to nothing with 9.56 left to go before halftime. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Let's St. Paul football on Hot 105. They make that? No. Trying to add back here. Welcome back to Miles Field here at St. Paul, where St. Paul leads 50 to 0. 9.56 left to go in the second quarter. St. Paul running away with this game, and when you score that much in the first, there's still 10, well, yeah, 10 minutes for all intents and purposes left here in the second. So Morello tees the ball up on the opposite end. First time he's kicked from this end of the field. As now Hartford will go from right to left, from east to west. Back deep is Seoul for Hartford. And the ball is teed up, and here we go. Peyton Norris into the game on kickoff coverage, taken by the up back this time. And number 35 around the right-hand side. That is, let's get a number here. Number 35 is Schroeder on the return, and it's going to be a nice return by him up to their own 35-yard line, first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Smith in the game on defense. Keaton Kennedy back in there on defense. Kenny Haney and Colin Carlson as Albertini takes a break on the sideline. Nose guard is Wilson Smith. Dent stays in at linebacker, and the Bradshaw brothers stay in at DN. Soul comes in behind Kistner. Now motion by McDiffitt. Hand off to Soul. Ball's on oh. the ground. And somehow Kistner, boy, he picks it up and gets walloped as he ran right into right into. One of the Bradshaw brothers, Chase Bradshaw, in on the tackle. He's going to gain about a yard. As it looked like he meant to hand that off the sole, and the football ended up on the ground, Mike. Yeah, it's a good heads-up play by Kister to quickly pick that up and try to get something out of it, got a yard or two out of it. Second and nine from their own 36-and-a-half-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Kister in the backfield in the shotgun. Motion from right to left to sole. Comes back behind Kistner. Now motion by McDiffin from left to right. It's going to be a hand. Nope, he's going back to pass. Throwing it deep. He's got a man down there and out of his outstretched arms. Pass was intended for Deal, Corbin Deal, a senior. And it'll be third down and nine for Hartford. 
Hartford not afraid to throw. That's the 15th pass on the night for Hartford, so they're still giving it a shot down the field. Third down and nine, nine oh two. Clock stopped. Left to go in the second quarter. Indians up 50 to nothing. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. In the pistol again is Kistner. On a third down and nine. Indians kind of move around on defense. Dent goes, drops back into coverage. Now motion by McDiffitt. Back to pass. Looking down the middle. He's got time. Wilson Smith pressuring him. Cuts to his left. Now back to his left. And he's going to be sacked back there. Chase Branshaw on, on the sack. Number 65. And a big loss on the play. It's going to be a loss of loss 10 of 11. yards. 11 yards. Yep. Back to their own 25-yard line. Call it the 26. A loss of 6 or 10. It'll be fourth down and 20 for Hartford. Wilson Smith with the initial pressure on him from the nose guard position. And the two Bradshaw brothers, Chandler and Chase, come help contain him and get him down. Two to the left, two to the right on the fourth and 20. Kistner it stands at its own 20. They've been kind of quick kicking out of here. And he's going to try to pass it. He just throws it down and it knocked down. Incomplete as he pass was intended. Well, who was that intended for? Mike number one? Uh, I think it was, yeah, it was intended. Deal. Oh, it was a 10. Oh, like McDiffitt. And yeah. it falls incomplete. So the Indians with great field position. First and 10. What a gutsy call by Hartford. I guess nothing to lose here. First yeah. and 10 for the Indians at their own 26 yard line. It's at the Hartford 26. At the Hartford 26, yes. So you get everybody in the game here. Let's see if Coach Watrick. Kenny Haney stays in at quarterback. Albertini on the sideline for the Indians. Dent and Carlson stay in the game. Murillo stays in the game at a guard. The Bradshaw brothers stay in at. So it's going to be in the pistol is Haney. Set to his right is Easton Dent. To his left is Colin Carlson. Hand off to Carlson. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Still got some running room off the left side. Dragging a man down across. <laughs> The 15 to the 14 yard line, good. 12 yard gain on first down. As he drug Dill on his back with him. Good hard run by Colin. Yeah, look for Coach Watcher to keep the ball on the ground here. Try to keep that clock moving as much as he can. Giving old Colin the ball. They got all the linemen up there in tight. Get some good blocking up front. Stone King in the game too at left Nick, or not Nick, excuse me. Ethan Stone King in at left guard for the Indians. In the pistol is Haney. Here comes the snap. Good snap. Hands it Dent off the left side. Puts his shoulder pad down. Bulls across the 10. Down to the 9-yard line. Good. 5-yard gain on first down. Give him a gain of 5. It'll be second down and 5 from the 9-yard line. It's called second down and 6, a gain of 4 for Dent. Dent's been a pretty good utility player both sides of the ball for St. Paul. He can play you know, just about anywhere. They use him on the line, use him in the backfield, use him on defensive linebacker, push him up inside. It's hard telling where you see Easton Dent. Second down and about six for the Indians in the eye formation. Dent at fullback, Carlson at tailback, Haney up under center. Hand off to Carlson. Right up to get they go. He stretches close to the first down, down to about the six-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. It's going to be third down and let's give it, call it two. A long two, caught third down and three, ball at about the seven yard line, six and a half, seven yard line. Indians need to get down inside their four for a first down. About two to the four for a first down. I formation again, Dent at fullback, Carlson at tailback, Haney up under center, hand off to Carlson, puts his shoulder pads down, bowls towards the four, and he's going to have a first down. It'll be first and goal for the Indians from inside the four, about the three yard line. First and goal for the Indians, 626 clock running now since the chains are set. Indians lead 50 to nothing. First and goal from the three yard line for the Indians. Haney under center, split back formation. Dent to the right, Carlson to the left. Hand off to Carlson. Shoulder pass down into the end zone, touchdown Indians. Indians extend their lead 56 to nothing with 606 left to go here in the second quarter. And it's been all Indians here tonight, Mike. Yeah, it's just been all Indians. Hartford just hadn't had anything for them on defense at all. So the Indians look 
to move on next week. And they will play the winner of Lost Springs Center and Moran. Marmonton Valley, that would be a two and three seed. Marmonton Valley being the three seed, Lost Springs would be the two seed out of their district. <clears throat> and the game will be at St. Paul. Time to be announced. And this time, Haney rolls back. Now he lost it in the end zone. Falls incomplete. Intended for Peyton Norris. A lot of pressure in there quick by Hartford. And the score stays 56 0. 606 left to go in the second quarter. We'll be back after this 30 second timeout. You're going to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Uh, welcome back to Miles Field here at St. Paul. 606 left to go here before halftime. Indians lead 56 to nothing. How you doing on the stat sheet back here, Mike? Ooh. Getting hand cramps out here trying to write down all the yards. And guys burning it up out here in the first half. It's going to sound like the end of the game stats when we give them here. And the way it looks, we may be out of here early. We'll have uh, probably a combined uh, Labette Health halftime show and the KW Trekking postgame show. We'll see how it turns out. But right now, that's what it's looking like. Murillo has the ball teed up. Back deep is Soul for Hartford. Stands back at his own six squib kick, taken by the up back. Up to the 30. <laughs> and across the 30 to the 33 yard line, first and 10 for Hartford. And it'll be first and 10 for Hartford from their own 33 and a half yard line. Well, I thank Brianna back in the studio. We're here back here a little bit. Brianna, good job back here in the studio, <laughs> keeping us on the air here tonight. I think the spooks are after her back in the studio. <laughs> two to the right, two to the left. In the shotgun is Kistner. Motion back into the backfield comes Soul. First and 10 for Hartford from their own 33. Now McDivitt in motion, and he's going to roll back to pass. Looks across the middle, under pressure, throws it out to Soul to the left, and Dent, boy. He had a bead drawn yeah, on Soul. On Soul tripped and fell for a short gain on the play. It's going to be a gain of about one. Soul, just a freshman, Mike. He's a returner and moves into the backfield for Hartford. Second down and nine. Ball advanced up to their own 34-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Kistner in the shotgun. Now motion by Soul comes back into the backfield. And here comes the snap on the big second down and nine. Back to pass is Kistner looking deep down the right side. And it's going to be off of the good effort there by Deal. And that's Kennedy on the coverage and just out of his outreach diving arms for Deal, and it falls incomplete. It'll be third down and nine from their own 32-yard line. Deal had a couple of steps on the on Kennedy there, and the pass just overthrown just a hair outside of what he could reach. Again, we want to congratulate all the cross-country runners. I know Mrs. Guard quite proud of them, but especially want to congratulate Taylor Watrick, who advances to state cross-country in Wamego. Two to the right, two to the left, third down and nine. Soul motions back into the backfield. And Kistner in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Rolls back to pass. Looks across the middle. Down deep in the middle. And it falls incomplete off oh. the hands. Kennedy timed his jump a little wrong. And he tipped it in the air. And McDiffitt had a shot at it on the carom. And it falls down incomplete. It'll be fourth down and nine. Yeah, he had a chance. It went up in the air. And thought McDiffitt might have a chance of grabbing it and bringing it in down there for a nice reception. But like I said, Kennedy timed his jump just a little early. That ball threw high in the sky and was floating a little bit on him. It didn't come down quite as quick as what he looked like it was going to. It'll be fourth down and nine. I want to give a big shout out to the chain gang over there, Mike. Old James, he wanted to give us a yeah, shout the out. Old on James radio. gang over there on the other side. Johnny Kennedy and 
Not sure who's on the other end of the sticks here tonight. In the pistol is Kistner. Back to pass on a fourth down and nine from their own 32. Rolls to his right, throwing it deep down the middle. Kennedy and McDivitt, it's caught as Kennedy and McDivitt. Little push by McDivitt and no call made as Kennedy is placed in front of him. And McDivitt, just a little bit of a shove in Kennedy's back and right over Kennedy's hands and into McDivitt's. It's going to be first and goal for Hartford inside their own five-yard line. Best field position of the night for the Hartford by far. About a 45-yard pass completion there. 56 to nothing. Indians lead. Now just one receiver wide to the right. Different set. Up under center for the first time is Kistner. He's going to run a quarterback sneak off the left side. Stretches for the end zone. He's in there. Indians a little out of kilter there with a different look as they only split one out to the right and in for the touchdown is Hartford. Indians lead 56 to 6, 438 left to go before halftime. Pending the extra point. Kistner in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right. Soul set to his right. One receiver to the left. Now Soul motions behind him, and he comes, Kistner, pissed right to Soul. He's going to run a little reverse, a little funky donkey to McDiffitt. He's going to go for the end zone, and he's in there. As he gets Hayden Smith, had him by the back of the jersey about the two, but couldn't get him contained. And Hartford scores on the extra point, and Indians lead 56-8. to eight Never know when you see that, little, see that little funky donkey, Dan. Pop, pop up any time, bite you. 4.38 left to go here before halftime on the funky donkey extra point play as the Indians still lead 58, 56 to 8. You know, give Hartford some credit. They fourth and long, and, and, you know, with a score like that, you got nothing to lose, really. You might as well give it a shot, and they did, and it paid off that time. A nice 47-yard completion there. You know, they've been throwing the ball all night without much success, but that's, you know, going to build them up a little bit on a play like that. Is that a phrase, Mike? It is now. <laughs> Comes straight out of the dictionary so. of Mike McCracken, doesn't no, it? I didn't say it. As the Indians are going to be on kickoff return for what second time tonight, Mike? The first was on the opening kickoff where Albertini returned it inside the Indians' five yard line. So we get a rare look at Horford's kicker, number 20, Novaro. Albertini stands at the 20, Kennedy stands at the five. Here comes the snap. It's onside kick, and ball's on the ground, and who is that? Number 60 gets up off the pile. Chandler Bradshaw up on the football on the onside kick. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians from midfield, actually their own 39-yard line. See Peyton Norris into the game on offense and Wilson Smith. Hayden Smith comes into the game. Kenny Haney's going to remain at quarterback. So a young line here, young playing time. A lot of the youngsters getting playing time here as Bradshaw comes up to the line of scrimmage. At fullback position is Colin Carlson. Tailback is Hayden Smith. Hayden Smith with the football off the left side. Shoulder pass down, driving forward. Good five-yard gain on first down by Smith. It'll be second down and five as he's into Hartford territory down to their 35-yard line. Mike, there is nothing funky dunky about that. They went <laughs> that straight good out. Hard, good hard run by Hayden Smith on that play. Carlson at fullback, Hayden Smith at tailback. Second down and four, gain of six for Smith on first down. Here comes the snap, a lot of movement. And up through the line of scrimmage goes Smith, stretches towards the first down. It's going to be about a yard short. It's going to be third down and one as he gets down to the Hartford 31 as Hartford really getting up to the line of scrimmage on a blitz there, Mike. Looks like, is that Dill limping off the field? Might have twisted an ankle over there, it looks like. It is Cameron Dill. Corbin Dill, excuse me, makes his way off the field for Hartford. Has a big third and one for the Indians. Carlson, a fullback. Smith at tailback. Haney up under center. Here comes a snap. Rolling to his right, Haney, he's going to be bottled up back deep. Not sure what that play was, but it did not work for the Indians. They did not fool Hartford at all. And it, Haney is sacked for a two-yard loss. It'll be third down and call it four for the Indians. Back at their own, 
or at the Hartford 34-yard line. See if Coach what Coach Watrick does here on fourth and four, and he's going to let the clock run down and call a timeout here as he talks to the ref about. I think this is the four, first fourth down play that St. Paul's had all night. So they're going to let the clock run down as far as it can. We're inside of three minutes now. They call a timeout. Exactly three minutes left to go in the first half. Indians lead 56 to eight. A big fourth down and four for the Indians. See what Coach Watrick elects to do coming out of this timeout. Mike, it's been a good football game for the Indians. Yeah, it's been fun to watch the Indians out here. They're working on a lot of things. When you build a cushion lead like that, you can you can try out some new things that may pay off if you get to move on, which looks like they're going to be able to do that. Uh, on the other hand, Hartford doing a little better job here late on defense with this last stand, making St. Paul decide what to do here on fourth down. i got to think they're going to go for it. They'll need about three yards. And the way the offense has been moving, I don't think that's going to be too big of a challenge, but they have got to fourth down here, so we'll see what happens coming out of timeout. We'll see if Coach Watcher will elect a punt here on the fourth and four, <laughs> or if he will try to go for it to try to run this clock on down into halftime and get out of here with a victory in week nine. Indians huddle up, coming out of timeout, fourth down and call it four. Ball at the heart for 34. They need to get to about the 31 yard line. It appears as though the Indians are going to go for it. Haney in the pistol. Slot right is Carlson. He's going to keep it around the right side. Cuts back up towards the middle. He's going to be short of the first down. Not even close. He's going to gain about a yard. Hartford will take over on downs as he gets down to the 33-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for Hartford from their own 33-yard line. Gib Carter in there at nose guard. Easton Dent linebacker. Haney Carlson, Bradshaw, Bradshaw, Kennedy, and Albertini back in there in the secondary 251 left to go in this ball game Indians lead 56 to 8 two receivers to the right two to the left as deal right back in there split wide to the left Kistner in the shotgun now soul comes in motion sets behind Kistner in the backfield and here's the snap back to pass is Kistner looking looking looking's got time now he's gonna roll to his left and run it and Dent shoves him out of bounds for no gain as he hurdles over the Indians bench. And it appears like he stepped out about the 32 at the line of scrimmage. Good cover or good secondary coverage by the Indians and good containment by the line of scrimmage for the Indians to contain Kistner on the rush. Good pursuit by the Indians there. Just strung it out and run him out of bounds for no gain. First and or second down and ten from their own 32. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner stands about his own 26-yard line. Wait till everybody gets set. Here comes the snap. Back to pass. Rolls to his right. He's going to throw it deep across the middle of the field. Oh, through Colin Carlson's hands. He had a chance to pick that off. And it falls to the ground. Incomplete good coverage by Carlson. And it's going to be second down and, or third down and 11. Ball spotted back at the 32-yard line for Hartford. Clock stop, 2.37 left to go before halftime. Innings lead 56 to 8. Austin O'Hara in, comes into the game at the defensive end, replaces Bradshaw. That'll be Chase Bradshaw. Two to the right, two to the left for Hartford on third down 11. Kistner in the shotgun. Here comes the snap. Back to pass. Going to be a little bit of pressure. Jumps over, man. Now, Gib Carter has him by the shirt. Can he get him down? And he does. He, does. he rips him down from behind. Does Carter for a loss of one. Bradshaw jumped into the air, and Kistner wisely just ducked underneath him and squirted right past him. Chandler Bradshaw had him dead to rights out there, and he just got away from him. Gib Carter chased him down, ripped him down from behind. A loss of one, fourth down, and called it 11. Ball at the Hartford. 31-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun. Big fourth down for the Indians defense, trying to close this game out here before halftime, and that is going to be a flag. That's thrown by the back judge, and he's going to call a false start on Harvard. That's kind of an odd place for the yeah, guy to come in on a false see start. Yeah, often. Five-yard penalty. It will be fourth and 16 for Hartford. 
Fourth and 16, ball at the Hartford 26-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. As they wait for the snap. And here's the snap, back to pass. Is Kistner going to throw it deep down the middle as far as he can throw it and caught by McDiffitt as he got behind the Indians defense again. Got behind Albertini that time. Now Albertini beat on the coverage. It'll be first and goal with 125 left to go in the game. And that's twice where Kistner just goes back as far yeah. as he can, just throws it down the middle of the field as far as he can. And the Indians have let McDiffitt get behind him on coverage a couple times here tonight. That's about 43 yards on that pass. First and goal for Hartford inside their own 10-yard line. With 116 left to go in the game. Up under center this time is Kistner. And it's going to be a shovel pass to Soul off the right side. And he's going to be bottled up. A short gain on the play. A gain of one. It'll be second and goal for Hartford. As timeout, Hartford with 104 left to go before halftime. With that timeout, we'll take a 30 second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul, Kansas, where Hartford second and goal from inside their own eight. That's twice, Mike, on fourth down. They heaved it down the field as far as they can, and the Indians has let Hartford McDiffitt, the receiver, get behind them. Now it's second down and goal as Hartford tries to extend this game beyond halftime if they can score here and hold the Indians. Kenny Kisner back to pass to the corner. And it's complete to McDiffitt. And there was another flag. Pushed I thought he off. pushed off again. Yeah. No call as McDiffitt's got away with that a couple times as Hartford scores. And they cut this lead to 56-14 to 14 with 58 seconds left to go here in the first half. It's not really a blatant push off, but he did it against He's Kennedy on the other. Room, yeah. and he kind of just extends his arms a little bit. As you guys can make your own judgment on the live stream as extra point pending 56 to 14 pending the extra point as Hartford with the last two scores of the game here has cut into this lead down to 42 for the Indians was that Dill or McDiffitt that was number 10 extra point is dropped incomplete pass number 10 is McDiffitt Mike that pass was intended for number 35 uh, Schroeder falls to the ground incomplete, so the Indians lead 56-14 to 14 with 58 seconds left to go here before halftime. Stick around for our Labette Health halftime show and our KW Trucking post-game show. Our title sponsor is Farmers Bank, and thanks to all our other sponsors that will sponsor the live stream and bring you all of Indian sports. And thanks to Brianna back in the studio on 105.5 for carrying the Indian football games. Hope you enjoyed it at home so far this season. The Indians look to extend their season into week 10, where if they can come out of this game victorious, they will meet the winner of Marmonton Valley. See what the, huh? <laughs> you looked at me funny, Dan. It caught me off guard there. I thought I was supposed to miss the cue there. You did. Oh, uh, well. Not the first time that ever happened. <laughs> Hartford <laughs> teased the ball up. As I was, I was trying to see if you'd help me out and fill me in. They play, the, they would play I've been the winner between. To keep up with the scorebook back here. Yeah, that is. I, yeah, I don't want that job. Onside <laughs> kick again. This ball. They got it. Hartford That's got Hartford the onside got kick. That ball didn't quite go <laughs> ten yards. I'm not sure we would have had to die for it. It was close. It's about the nine yard mark, and Hartford with a little bit of life here as they now trail 56-14 and have the football. 58 seconds left to go before halftime. Indians defense stays on the field off the a successful onside kick for Hartford. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun. 
Back to pass. Rolls to his right. Now he's got running room off the right side. And out of bounds he goes. Defense going to have to toughen up, stiffen up here. Chandler Bradshaw needs to stay on his feet. That's twice he's thought Kistner was going to throw it. He jumps in the air where he just needs to stay on him and go ahead and go for the sack. If he gets the pass off, he gets it off. And they slipped around him when he went up off his feet and he gains a nice gain down into Indian Territory. And it's going to be first and 10 from Hartford from their own 27-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun. And here's the snap. Back to pass. Throws a short pass to the right. Fall. Falls incomplete to the ground. Pass was intended for number 14. I'm having trouble with my paperwork here. Mike is getting all <laughs> soggy on lost me. Lost your tabletop because of the rain. and we rearrange things and everything. Soul was, Soul was the intended receiver. Second down in 10. 48 seconds left to go before halftime. Indians need a pick six to end this game here before halftime, yeah. Mike. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Give credit to Hartford. They've fought back in this game, scored the last 14 points. Kistner in the shotgun. Second down and 10. Back to pass. Looks across middle. Now he rolls to his right. As the Indians try to put some light pressure, he just throws away. There's nobody around, but he is. Now there's going to be a flag. I don't think there is. Time. There is no such thing as out of the pocket for high school football. It's intentional grounding against Kistner. And I believe that will be loss of down. So it'll be third down plus the penalty yardage. Intentional grounding against Hartford. That backs him up 10 yards, I believe plus the loss of down. 10 yards from the spot he threw the ball, apparently. Now 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, so it should be third down. It looks like it's going to be 15 yards. 15-yard penalty, so it's, it should be loss of down. It should be third down and 25, now back at midfield. It is third down and 25 for Hartford. Third down and 25 for Hartford. With 40 seconds left to go before halftime, in his lead, 56-14. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. In the shotgun is Kistner. Now Soul in motion sets up behind Kistner on the third down 25. McDiffick goes in motion. Hand off to Soul off the left side. Hit hard by Easton Denton. Ripped down to the ground after a short gain on the play. Good sure tackle by Dent. It'll be fourth down and long. And that's timeout by Hartford. 33 seconds left to go here before halftime. Indians lead 56 to 14, a big fourth and long for Hartford. Ball back in Indian territory, down to the Indian 37-yard line. Yeah, fourth and long ways, but it was fourth and quite a ways the last time, and they got the big pass playoff. So St. Paul going to have to get back and do a little better job in that pass coverage, just because they got that lead. They have had a couple of pass breakdowns. It's really got them to where they're losing out let Hartford get away with 14 and the unanswered points here in the second quarter. That would be hard to keep out of your head, Mike, leading 56 to nothing yeah. and uh, kind of lose a little bit of focus, thinking you're going to cruise on into halftime and the game will be over. Now all of a sudden it may not be that way, so the Indians defense going to have to stiffen up under here on a big third down, 33 seconds left to go. Before halftime, Hartford with the football, fourth down and 20 from the Indian 37-yard line. Hartford needs to get clear down inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line for a first down. But they've done that on fourth down twice tonight already, so that's nothing uncommon. Usually what happens is McDiffitt runs as fast as he can, and Kisner throws it as far as he can. He rolls to his right, tries to get to Soul, and does. Hit hard by Kenny Haney. Good, well, good hard coverage hit. there by Haney. And Haney knocks Soul down, and he's hurt. He's still down, yeah. On the sideline. Good we hope clean he's tackle, okay. but it, it was a good. good Kenny Haney come up from about five yards deep, and after Soul caught it and turned around, he laid a lick on him, and Soul slow to get up. Good hard hit by Kenny Haney. Hope Soul's all right. He's down, or Soul, he's down on the far side for Hartford. Indians will take over first and 10 after this injury timeout. Back at their own 29-yard line with 26 seconds left to go before halftime. We're going to go ahead and take an injury timeout. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105.
Welcome back to Miles Field. Indians first and 10 from their own 29. Albertini back in the pistol. Takes the football. Comes around the right-hand side. Looking for some running room. Dragged down by the jersey. Not until he gets up. Now there's a late, late flag. Comes in with 18 seconds left to go before halftime. Came in from the back, Judge. Should be a horse collar. Had Adam up around the neck area. They're going to get together and talk about it from the sideline. Flag. Oh, waving and it off. And they're going to wave it off as they discussed with the line judge on the side, they wave it off. It was not a horse collar. It'll be second down. 18 seconds left to go before halftime. Albertini, I don't think he was out of bounds, but maybe he was. They have the clock stopped. Second down and three. Albertini in the pistol. Ball back at the Indian 37. Here's second down play. And off to Carlson on the end around, looking for some run room. Don't have much. 12 seconds left to go. Timeout by the Indians is. Indians need to score to close this game out, and you can tell they want to get out of here at halftime as Carlson, no gain on the play. It's going to be third down and four after this timeout with 12 seconds left to go. Here before halftime, Indians lead 56 to 14. Yeah, got himself in a little bind there coming in that second quarter, late in that second quarter, and just let the receivers get behind them with a little bit of a defensive letdown. They're not going to be able to get out of here unless they can put some points on the board here in 12 seconds. Mercy rule, an eight-man football is 45 points anytime after halftime. So if the Indians' lead is more than 45 at halftime, the game will be over right now. 56 minus 14 ain't quite enough, is it, Mike? Nope, not quite. My math's right, which it hadn't been sometimes. Third down and four. Boy, you're a stat man if you <laughs> – all the confidence in the world in you, Mike. 56 to 14, 12 seconds left to go before halftime. Third down and four. Ball spotted at the Indian 37-yard line. Cool evening here in St. Paul. Now Dent goes in motion. Adam Albertini drop backs to pass for the first time tonight. He's going to throw it deep down the middle of the field for Bradshaw. Falls incomplete with six seconds left to go here before halftime as it falls harmlessly to the ground. 56-14, to 14, Indians lead. Now there's a flag. What is the flag? Way back deep. Roughing the passer against Roughing Hartford. Roughing the passer against Hartford. Well, I took my no. eye after I Albertini did too. I, did I took it. my eye completely off of Albertini as he started to scramble up the middle before the line scrimmage, threw it deep for Bradshaw as Dent went in motion out of the back slot position out to the right. That's going to back Hartford up. And uh, Indians got six seconds left to try to score here before halftime to get this game over with at halftime. As that's going to march the football into Hartford territory. Clear down inside to 30 to the 29-yard line. 56-14, Indians lead. Six seconds left to go here before half. Indians up to the line of scrimmage. Albertini in the pistol. Easton Dent set to his left. Clock's winding now. Albertini's going to keep it up the middle. He's going to be wrapped up, throws it late, incomplete. And it was intended for Bradshaw. And that is halftime. Halftime scores, 56-14. Indians lead by 42. We'll be back after this two-minute timeout. You're at St. Paul football on Hot 105.
Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul. Halftime score, Indians 56, Hartford 14. Indians led this game 56 to nothing. Cruising in to halftime, and Hartford scored back-to-back -to, -back to extend this game into the third quarter where the Indians with a nice lead here at halftime. Mike, a good first half put together by Indians. Yeah, good first, really, yeah, most of the first half, and Hartford didn't score until there was about four and a half minutes left, so St. Paul within four and a half minutes of being able to get out of here. But uh, a couple of defensive pass coverage breakdowns let the receivers get behind them. Uh, they need to get out there and play a little better on pass defense to prevent that from happening. But irregardless, here they come into halftime with a big lead. So a uh, good opportunity to come out here immediately after the half. Now they did receive the opening kickoff, so Hartford get the ball after halftime. So <clears throat> the defense is going to have to step up, try to get it back in the hands of the offense. But the way Adam Albertini has been running around and, and being able to outrun everyone, hopefully – he get a chance in the second half to put this game away for the Indians. Cool, drizzly night here in St. Paul after a little bit of rain last night, a little bit of rain during the day, really light rain or drizzle, we'll call it, during the day. It has field conditions, just greasy, not not really wet, not muddy out there, Mike, uh, just pretty slick. Hartford come out in the game, have struggled on the offensive side in that first quarter, couldn't hardly, didn't have a completed pass for eight or nine passes in a row, but they really kind of started to warm up a little bit in that second quarter, Mike, and have a little more success with that spread offense. Indians defense playing pretty well, just like Mike said, a couple of breakdowns on defense in the secondary with a big couple big fourth down completions by Hartford got him into first and goal position twice where they're able to convert on two touchdowns and one extra point to cut this lead to 56-14. We'll see what kind of adjustments the Indians make here at halftime. I don't think they have changed much offensively, Mike. They've been moving the ball at will. They just need to hold Hartford and get into the end zone here and get this game into next or get this game over with and move on in the bracket play next week. Where if the Indians can win, they will play the winner between Lost Springs Center and Marmonton Valley. Yeah, and I think Hartford came in here with a pretty good game plan. They came in here expecting to throw the ball. They come out and spread the offense out, put the two receivers out each side. And, took off and threw the ball didn't even run it for the first several plays i'll talk about that a little bit later when we go through the stats but you know that mist it wasn't really what you'd call rain but it was a heavy mist and it was just enough to keep that ball slick and it was hard for the quarterback to throw and the receivers to catch and uh, you know probably not a bad game plan because you saw once the mist led up there middle of the second quarter or so and they were able to play with the dry ball they were able to get some yardage especially the two big pass plays that they had so you know Hartford came in ready to play and they did a good job of, of not giving up for sure because they came back here and got themselves another chance to come out here in the second half and try to put some more points on the board on the other hand St. Paul got to be a little disappointed in themselves they'll come out here I'm sure with a little more fire after coach Watrick visits with them at halftime but they do have in the past the first game of the year gave up that big lead in the second half so that's something to be aware of they put the complete game together last week though against a good southern coffee county team hopefully they've crossed that hill and it's not going to be an issue but it's something to think about when they could have been out of here at half i think the indians will refocus here at halftime here and see if they can get out of here and move on in the bracket play if they do happen to get by here with a victory they have the luxury of having another home game next week mike nice to play here at home again for the third week in a row if they can come out victorious tonight time will be announced depending on their opponent and how far they travel. I think there's a little discussion on what time the game will start, but here a Thursday night game, no school and a four-day school week for the Indians tomorrow, so that makes it nice. Kids will have a day off tomorrow to kind of recoup here, assuming they can come out. Of, we're making a lot of assumptions that can hold on to this 42-point <laughs> lead, but yeah. the Indians have been pretty dominant here in the first half, quite honestly. They just had a couple of glitches there late. Uh, thanks for everybody for listening to LaBette Health Halftime Show. When we come back from this next break, Michael has some first-half stats, a lot of yardage by Adam Albertini put up in the first half. Good blocking by his line of scrimmage, but Mike will have your LaBette Health Halftime stats after this next two-minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105.
Well, welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul, where St. Paul leads here at halftime, 56 to 14. You're listening to the Labette Health Halftime Show. Mike, what do you got for Labette Health Halftime stats? Well, St. Paul came out on fire against the Hartford Jaguars. It came right out off the bat, and, and Adam Albertini, actually Colin Carlson, scored first for St. Paul with a five-yard touchdown, running only 15 seconds off of the clock once the game got started. And then just that quick, Hartford had to punt. Adam Albertini took advantage of that with a 21-yard run. And uh, St. Paul missed that extra point, but they had a 14 to nothing lead with uh, less than two minutes into the ball game. And then they just kept the pressure on. They took the ball away on a punt by Hartford and then with 9.52 left made the extra point. Of, that was a 52-yard run by Adam Albertini where he started getting a little bit of space there. So there we were with three minutes out of the game and St. Paul already off and running with a 20 to nothing lead. And they kept the pressure on most of the way through the first half until we talked about some of the issues they had there in the second quarter with with uh, 438 left in the second quarter Hartford able to put some points on the board finally made their extra point but by that time St. Paul already had a 56 point lead uh, St. Hartford put another touchdown in right before the half with 58 seconds left brought us to our halftime score of 56 to 14 individual stats for St. Paul led by Adam Albertini who had a big night so far and we're only at halftime Adam has seven carry, eight carries for 235 yards on the ground and five touchdowns. That's a big night uh, at the end of a game, let alone at halftime. So he's just keeping up what he's been doing all year. But he's not alone, though, tonight. Pretty good night for everyone. Colin Carlson, seven carries, 33 yards. He has two rushing touchdowns. Keaton Kennedy with 13 yards on one carry. And Easton Dent had a couple of carries. Two carries for 42 yards and a rushing touchdown for Easton. Hayden Smith, two carries, nine yards. And Kenny Haney playing that quarterback position took off on a scramble. He lost a couple of yards. He had actually two rushes, lost two yards on the first one, and then gained one of them back. So he had a net minus one yards in the first half. St. Paul threw two passes late in the first half. Adam Albertini, both were incomplete. So Albertini is 0 for 2 in the passing department. On the other side of the field, looking at, down the line at Hartford, it was pretty much throw the ball the whole first half as far as they were concerned. Their quarterback, Kistner, Sometimes he'd make himself a little time, but for the most part, didn't have a lot of time to get him off. I think he threw, let's see here, he threw eight passes. The first eight passes, he only had one completion for one yard, but by the end of the first half, he ended up throwing 25 passes, ended up with 145 yards and a touchdown. The touchdown was uh, the short pass, the six-yard touchdown pass, but it was set off by the 43-yard completion that he had, uh, right, the play right before that to number 10, is that, I McDivitt. think that's McDivitt, yeah, it's number 10 McDivitt. In the receiving department, Soul had four receptions, correction, five receptions for 24 yards. McDivitt with four receptions, 97 yards. He had another completion of 43 besides the 45-yarder that he caught. And then uh, number one had one reception for a nice 24-yard reception. Rushing side of things, Soul had <coughs> six yards rushing. Kistner scrambling out of the backfield, 11 of 12. He had one rushing touchdown on a two-yard scamper for one of the Hartford scores. So overall, that's the stats for the first half. We'll see what St. Paul can finish up on, see how many ad yards Adam Albertini gets. He gets another chance here in the second half. Mike, I really think they ought to have a little bonus stat for the line of scrimmage because eight carries for yeah, 230 some credit, yards. I think Haney and Carlson <laughs> in the line of scrimmage ought to get like a little bonus yeah. and ought to get some yardage too because – that's dang near 30 yards of carry for Albertini. <laughs> and that's considering that last carry here before halftime that he gained about three yards. So before that, it's a pretty good night. Pretty good first half, let alone a night. Not, night's not over. As there's about three minutes left to go before the Labette Hill halftime show's over, plus a little bit of three-minute warm-up time as Hartford deferred, I believe, to start the game. So they will have the possession of football to start this second half. We'll be back after this last two-minute timeout. You listen to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Brianna, go ahead and make it a three-minute, okay?
quite a few folks joining us on the live stream tonight, Dan. Appreciate that. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Quite a few viewers. And if the Indians can come out of victorious, join us next Friday night for another home game here at Miles Field. Better yet, come out to Miles Field and support your Indians. Yeah, they will hopefully play the winner between Lost Springs and Marmota Valley. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul, where we are at halftime here at St. Paul. St. Paul leads 56 to 14. We're finishing up halftime here. About four minutes left to go. About a minute left plus three minutes. They usually put three minutes on the clock for the warm-ups. Hartford will have the football to start the second half. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to our Labette Health halftime show. Stick around for our KW Trucking post-game show. Mike will have all the final game stats. In the KW Truckee Post Game Show, I want to thank our title sponsor, Farmers Bank. Mike, I want to talk a little bit about cross country this w weekend in Wamego. Yeah, it's going to be a fun weekend all around. St. Paul got already people going to stay. Taylor Watrick qualifying for state and cross country. I think she's leaving tomorrow. Big send off. I think they're going to have some, some folks trying to get rallied around Taylor and, and be up at the grocery store, give her a send off on the highway as they head out to Wamego. Quite a drive out there, and she'll. Uh, Get out there, spend the night, and then take off Saturday morning cross country in Wamego. I've been out that way. It's pretty hilly. And I'm glad it's her running, not me. I couldn't make it early <laughs> up the stairs tonight. But Taylor's done a good job all year, and you know she's really worked hard. She's multi-talented or multi-sport athlete. She plays volleyball, I think, a little bit. Just she had a little bit of injury, I think, earlier. But she plays some basketball. She's, you know, good basketball player. Cross country, she always does real good. Uh, you know, everyone enjoys watching Taylor play. And one of our one of the things we got here in town, one of our great sponsors, Mike, if you can't make it up the stair stairs, there's all Styles Fitness and more. They're one of the great Indian <laughs> if sponsors. If I spent a little more time there, the stairs wouldn't be quite so high on me, would they? 248 left to go here in I saw you climbing the stairs, too. You can go with me. We can double up at Styles, get two memberships. There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> and that's a great place for, it's a great, it's really a great, great thing for St. Paul to have, the community to have. Mike, uh, we're sort of a little, give a little shout out to the uh, Maddie Winter and Luke Harmon cuts hair up there. Yeah, hair yeah, up there. Mike, it's really, in town yeah, going on really. all the time somewhere around here. And that's another thing. The old activities list this week, Mr. Turner Poise gives us an activity list. It's getting a little thin, Mike, as hard to believe that fall sports is already wrapping up and we're working right into winter sports and school year. Dang, already a third over at least or close to it anyway and <clears throat> rolling right along here. Yeah, hear them start bouncing some basketballs around in the gym. I think junior high started doing some workouts. I don't know if they've officially started practice yeah, I yet, they but I think they've been in started, there doing yes. some working out anyway and yep. starting to get excited about some basketball. But right now we've got a second half of football to get started here and see if the Indians could pull one out. But it's just that time of year where you're kind of in that transition period. As long as the Indians keep going, uh, you know, they won't have anything to worry about with basketball until football's over, obviously. But it's not far away. We hope that there's not very much time between the last football game and the first basketball <laughs> like game last like year. last yeah. year, Mike, where there's only about a week. And that, that it will not hurt the head coach, Coach Watrick's feelings any if the Indians can keep extending their football season as they try to make a run into the playoffs again. As there's about 118 left on the clock. Everybody's finishing their last game warm-ups. Warm Mike, what's the keys to the second half here? Well, I think second half, obviously, St. Paul needs to hold – uh, Hartford Hartford comes out here and receives the kickoff. They just need to shut them down, see if they can get them three and out or four and out if they're going to try for it on fourth down, which they've been doing. So that's the biggest key. Defense make a good stand here, get the ball back in the offense's hands, and then the offense just drive down the field, put some points on the board. They've had pretty good luck and not had a lot of problems doing that until late in the second half, but coming out of halftime here, get a little bit of rest in them and, and try to get that done as quick as they can, get out of here, get some rest. A little weather update is it is not drizzling nothing like it was Mike no. but it feels like it's it has cooled off oh eight nine ten degrees since the start of this game it was pretty drizzly to start of the game half rainy half drizzly now it's just it's not dry by no stretch of the imagination heavy heavy humidity light light maybe a light drizzle but it's definitely cooling off with the weather change here sun's supposed to be out tomorrow it's supposed to be a nice day Enjoy your Friday and then enjoy your weekend. It's supposed to be a pretty nice weekend, too. As the Indians get ready to take the field here, as Murillo will have the ball teed up for the Indians, kicking from left to right, from west to east to Hartford. A little different look for Hartford. This time, 
Soul's been back deep every time. Now they have three returners with number 24. Devin Smith, a he freshman. He McDivitt's place. Was it McDivitt got tweaked up a little bit on that hit by Haney well, in the first Well, Soul half. has been back returning every <laughs> kick. Now standing back, number 24 is Smith standing back at his own 12-yard line. Morello with the ball teed up, and we are underway. Thanks, everybody, for listening to our Labette Health Halftime Show. Ball's loose on the ground, 19 picked up by Smith, and hit hard in there, brought down Easton Dent in on the hit, as well as Colin Carlson. It will be first and 10 for Hartford from their own 23-yard line. Oh, Soul did get hit. You meant yeah. Soul, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. Dip, yeah now, now I'm with you. Yeah. Um, got hit hard there by Haney in the first half. So, yeah, Smith did take his place on the kick return. You threw me off with McDivitt. Yeah, this now, now, was wrong there. Now I remember, remember the hit. In the pistol is Kistner. Back at the 23. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. It's going to be a screen pass out to the right. McDivitt now. Little hook and ladder. Hook and ladder to big number 75. <laughs> There's some more of that funky donkey stuff for you, Mike. That was a funky donkey if I ever saw one. That I'm was, not sure how to score it on that day, to be honest with you. That was Trujillo <laughs> as McDivitt had a reception for about five yards, and he flipped it to Trujillo for another 11 yards. It'll be first and 10 for Hartford up to their own 37-yard line. 14-yard gain on first down for Hartford. I seen the big fella coming out, rolling out from his left-hand position. I thought he was going out the lead block <laughs> on the screen, but no, he was in on the play. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner back to pass. And here's a shovel pass to McDivitt for a five-yard gain as he's pushed out of bounds by Adam Albertini. And it'll be second down and five or six for Hartford up to the 40-yard line. You know, Kissner got a lot more consistent and accurate here late in his passing game. Started out having a lot of problems getting any completions, but since it's dried up a little bit on him, he's been pretty good, pretty pretty consistent being able to complete some passes. Excuse me, Mike. Second down and seven, a gain of three. Two receivers to the right, two to the left for Hartford. Kissner in the shotgun. Here's the snap, low snap, rolls to his right. This time he's hit as he throws it, and it falls harmlessly incomplete. Pass was intended for number 23, I believe, Haney on the coverage. And that is Kinzel, I believe, that was the intended receiver. Might have been Smith, could have been 24. Either way, third down and seven for Hartford from midfield, the 40-yard line, actually still just by the football in their own territory at their own 39 and a half yard line. Third down and seven. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun. Press defense by the Indians. Cross the middle to McDivitt. Caught but down by Albertini. He's going to be really close to a first down. I believe he's going to have a first down into Indian territory on the crossing slant. And just enough for a first down. It'll be a gain of eight and into Indian Territory down to the 32-yard line. First and 10 for Hartford. Ball at the Indian 32. Hartford coming out here with some aggression, hitting those quick hitter passes and throwing the ball down the field. 10.58 left to go in the third. 56 to 14. Indians lead. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the shotgun. First and 10 for the in, or for Hartford. Back to pass is Kittner. Rolls to his right. Now a flag. penalty flag comes in late, and it's going to be complete down inside the five-yard line, but a flag. Well, you got to hope that's a hold coming back, from back there. Back at the 33-yard line. That was complete to McDivitt. Albertini on the coverage. McDivitt got behind him. Albertini brought him down inside the five, holding mm -hmm. on hurt. Hartford. Oh, so the Indians hurt. catches a break as Hartford gets called for the hold. The receiver was down there, Albertini trying on the coverage, but as the ball was in the air, it was kind of thrown to his outside shoulder. The receiver made a cut outside. Albertini tried to spin around. That's when he lost about a step or two on him and allowed that to be a completed pass. Flag thrown back at about the Indian 34. They'll march it back <clears throat> into Hartford territory at their own 38. So that holding penalty is a loss of about 10 yards. It'll be first down and 20 for Hartford. 
as again the Indians have a little trouble on that deep pass from Kistner to McDivitt. McDivitt definitely his favorite target on the night. Kistner back in a pistol, two to the right, two to the left. Here comes the shotgun snap. Back to pass. Up in the air, McDivitt's passed him again, but he Didn't lost, see the ball. totally lost the football and over his head as he got behind the coverage again. McDivitt running a fly pattern, but he was looking over his right shoulder. The ball went over his left shoulder. It's a good thing he didn't see it because he was definitely behind the Indians. Yeah, he had two or three defense. steps on Albertini there. They're going to have to drop him back a little farther, try to keep everyone in front of him because he's having some trouble keeping up. Second down and 20 for Hartford. Back inside at their own 39-yard line. I actually think they gained about a yard on that incomplete pass. <laughs> it was at their 38. Now it's at the 39. Kistner. In the shotgun, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Indians getting a little pressure on Kistner, having to get ready a little early. Back pass, screen pass. Albertini up on the coverage. Nowhere to go for number 35 as the ball actually ended up on the ground. Albertini seen that coming, smelled that out. That was Schroeder. Schroeder, a sophomore for Hartford, so it'll be a loss of about two yards on the plate. Back to the Hartford 37 yard line, third down and 22 for Hartford. <laughs> two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kistner in the pistol, stands as his own 31, waiting for the snap. Brad Shaw's Dent and Carter ready to put some pressure on him. Here comes the pressure. Back to pass, and he sacked Gib Carter with a big sack. Back at the Hartford 27-yard line quarter in there quick from that nose guard position. Yeah, lost about eight yards on that sack. and Gibb had him lined up and dialed in, and he just put him on the ground. The Bradshaw boys, Easton Dent and Gibb Carter, had been getting in there. Kistner just getting the passes off before that. That time, Gibb Carter never even gave him a chance. He wrapped him up and down to the ground. He went. It is fourth down and a bus ride for Hartford. Back at their own 20 three yard line they need to get clear down to the indian 21 for a first down albertini now stands back at an indian territory at his own 30. balls loose on the ground rolling to his left kistner's just going to rush it runs out of bounds at the 30. indians will take over on downs he gets past the light of scrimmage for a yard so officially it's not a sack he's shoved down of bounds by the indians for a gain of one but it'll be first in 10 for the indians at the Hartford 30-yard line. Defense done their job that time, made a big stop here. Did a good job getting everything, getting them back in with a short field. Now the offense got to take over, put these points on the board. Those last two or three plays, Mike, was caused by pressure in the backfield on the quarterback. He threw it way earlier than yeah. he wanted to. Albertini in the pistol, set to his right is Kennedy. Slot to the left is Carlson. First and 10 for the Indians at the Hartford 30. Here comes a snap. Albertini's going to keep it off the right side. Back up the middle. Turns the gas on. Breaks the tackle. 10-5. Touchdown, Indians. Ball game. 30-yard touchdown run as Albertini gets through the line of scrimmage by the good line of scrimmage block. And the last 15 yards beats two man. Break one tackle to 10, and he's into the end zone. And that should be the ball game. And that is the ball game. Final score, Indians 62 Hartford 14. We'll be back with our KW Trucking post game show after this two minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Thanks everybody for listening on the live stream. Join, join us next Friday night. Indians will play at home versus either Lost Springs Center or Marmonton Valley. Stick tuned to the radio station to see.